This program is brought to you by Emory University. Actually, I had a number of things to say earlier today, which some of you may not have heard. You weren't there, but I had a number of things to say about Alice, about, well, many of them you've heard from other introducers today. Her fierce commitment to peace and justice. Um, when people asked me, uh, as they often did, because I often bragged that I knew her, you know. Uh, and uh, asked me, what, what, what is it about her? I said, well, there are lots of things about her. But uh, what strikes me is that here she becomes this raging success from this, you know, from what? <laughs> from 1718 in Eaton, Georgia and then goes to Spelman and to Sarah Lawrence and becomes a poet and a writer and she writes the color purple and she gets the Pulitzer Prize and she's feeded all over. I said, what really strikes me, that's, to me, that's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> what made it enough for me about Alice was with all of that success, she never wavered a second from her powerful commitment to racial and economic and world justice. That's what struck me, you know. Uh, I, I was once in Hawaii. I like to brag about the fact that I've been to Hawaii. I don't know. I, I guess I was invited to speak, and I was there sitting in the student lunchroom at the University of Hawaii because some people don't take you to nice dinners. When you go to speak, they take you to the student lunchroom. <laughs> it's not like the great meals that Rudolf Bird has given us while we've been here. Uh, so I was there in the student lunchroom, and there was this uh, student sitting across from me, and uh, I saw she was reading a book, The Color Purple. Well, I, I didn't you know, rush to say, oh, you know, she was my student. <laughs> <laughs> to, to imply that if she hadn't been my student, she would never have written The Color Purple. <laughs> you see. So, no, I, I, I restrained myself. <laughs> I just said, uh, well, what do you think of it? She looked at me. She said, this book changed my life. Wow. I'd never heard anybody say that about any book. Well, uh, that made an impression. <laughs> well, let me, I'll say one more thing about Alice, which I didn't say when I was talking about her earlier today, which in, in that whole, you know, range of, of things to be said about her, which I, I left out, and I realized that it, it's important. And that is, that she has a wicked sense of humor. <laughs> Which, we, lived on the, we lived on the Spelman campus, my wife and I and kids, and when we got to know Alice, which was very soon, uh, she would come around the house and she and my wife bonded and she and our kids bonded and uh, they loved one another. And, uh, and, uh, and then the uh, summer came, the end of that first year that we knew Alice, and uh, that, that summer we sort of separated. Alice was somewhere working, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, my, my wife was, had surgery early that summer, and, uh, but uh, I had uh, committed myself to coming to Greenwood, Mississippi. I was working with SNCC in Mississippi, and I was committed to coming to Greenwood to be with, with SNCC and, 
and also to write about SNCC and, and uh, you know, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. And, uh, and so, uh, well, should I go to Greenwood? And, uh, and my wife said, no, I, yes, and I want to come with you. So I wrote to Alice and I said, well, Roz and I are going to Greenwood. And, and, my, and Alice replied, said, well, she said, that really is considerate of you. Your wife has just come out of the hospital and you're taking her to the most tranquil, peaceful place that you can imagine. <laughs> Someday, I'll forgive her. <laughs> the preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.